Today we're talking about the early history of acid-base theory. We're not just doing this because I like history, we're doing it so we can develop a definition of acids and bases that's based around their chemistry instead of our observations about chemicals. So we can predict what acids and bases will be. And our success criteria is being able to describe how Arrhenius defined acids and bases. So we already know from previous years some properties of acids and bases. We know that we can test for acids and bases with litmus paper. Litmus turns red in acids, blue in bases. We also know that acids and bases both conduct electricity. And we can use that information to distinguish between molecular, ionic, acidic, and basic solutions. What our core definition of acids and bases is going to be is that acids are defined by their ability to create hydrogen ions, while bases are defined by their ability to create hydroxide ions. And I'm going to show you how we got to those definitions. So the very first chem modern chemist to try and understand acids and bases was Anton Lavoisier. And what he believed was that it was oxygen atoms that made chemicals to be acidic. And this was around 1776 that he published this idea. Uh, later on, Sir Humphrey Davy in 1815 showed that not all acids contained oxygen. So he suggested that, hey, these don't all have oxygen, but they do have hydrogen. So maybe that's what's making them acidic. However, Davy was never really able to put this into a proper scientific theory. So it kind of got left by the wayside for a little bit. Then Justice von Liebig uh, suggested a definition of acids where acids were hydrogen salts. And in chemistry, when we say salt, we really just mean ionic compounds. So what Liebig was saying was that it was ionic compounds where you had hydrogens as cations instead of a metal. Now, unfortunately for Liebig, while he was on to something, he wasn't able to explain why some compounds that contained hydrogen were neutral, and even some compounds containing hydrogen were basic, which is the opposite of acidic. It didn't happen that we got a solid definition until Savante Arrhenius proposed one in 1884. What Arrhenius believed was that acids were substances that could dissolve in water and release hydrogen ions. So when they ionized or dissociated in water, they would produce a hydrogen ion. And that matched with Liebig and Davies' attempted definitions as well. Okay, they contain hydrogens. The hydrogens are making them acidic. That's Davies' definition. And Liebig's definition was saying that they're hydrogen salts. So the hydrogen's a cation. When it dissolves in water, it's releasing the hydrogen as the cation as well. And Arrhenius was also able to go one step further. He also defined bases. He said that alkaline or basic substances did the same thing, but instead of dissolving to produce hydrogen ions, they dissolve to produce hydroxide ions. And this is the start of our modern definitions of acids and bases. Arrhenius was able to describe acids and bases as being ionic compounds, Bases would dissolve and produce a cation and a hydroxide ion, while acids would dissolve and produce a hydrogen ion along with an anion. This was our first good definition of acids. There is more to it, but this is a step in the right direction. So we will continue to refine this definition, but Arrhenius was definitely on to something.